How is Earth habitable? Why can life thrive on it? While the sun's plasma blasts towards us, what's protecting it? We're protected by Earth's magnetosphere, also called Earth's magnetic field. Let's learn more right here. There's a region around the planet beyond the atmosphere, created by Earth's internal magnetism called the magnetosphere. The reason life develops and continues to keep us alive is because of this magnetic environment. It's why we thrive. What's this magnetosphere and what does it protect us from? Let's take a closer look as we move towards the sun. When the sun blasts plasma from the solar storm, it emits huge bursts of energy and solar flares form. Solar flares are burst from the sun during an eruption, pushed into space of solar and cosmic particle radiation. This electromagnetic radiation from the sun does reach the earth and could destroy the atmosphere while on its run. But the atmosphere's protected when these particles reach it by the magnetosphere, deflecting when these particles do hit. The magnetosphere changes shape when blasted with these particles, directing them away from the atmosphere so they aren't harmful. If our atmosphere were to deteriorate over time, life on earth would perish. You've learned this in this rhyme. Some of the particles aren't deflected away but have no fear when they get trapped in earth's magnetosphere the trap particles get shot towards earth's two poles in the field lines also called the dipole which means two poles when these particles reach the atmosphere they react with oxygen and nitrogen causing the auroras that appear let's take a closer look at where this magnetosphere is formed we'll slice the earth in half so you're visually informed the electrically charged molten iron churns for sure below the earth's surface with Within the planet's outer core. This generates a magnetic field large enough to race far past our Earth's atmosphere out into space. I am the Earth, the only planet with organic life. With 8.7 million species, we all fight to survive. You all live. And keep this planet really healthy so that we can all thrive My atmosphere is 78% nitrogen Another 21% of it is oxygen Another small percentage is of other elements Without my atmosphere around you would be frozen I take 365 It's just one time that I'm spun You won't fly off into space Gravity's pulling you down As fast as 9.8 meters a second Towards the ground I am the Earth, the only planet With organic life With 8.7 million species We all fight to survive You all live on me So work like bees in a hive And keep this planet really healthy So that we can all thrive there are 12 different types of climates that exist on me. Moderate, polar, dry, and tropical are four groups you see. Then there is continental, it is the fifth category. One climate in no group is highland way above the sea. I'm the third planet from the sun, no one is denser than me. My axis tilted 23.5, yeah that's my degree. 4.5 billion years ago is when I am the Earth, the only planet with organic life With 8.7 million species, we all fight to survive You all live on me, so work like bees in a hive And keep this planet really healthy so that we can all thrive I'm an exoplanet orbiting the star, Caro 7 you see. In the constellation of Monoceros, my name is Caro 7B. 
I was first detected photometrically in 2009 by the French led Kuro mission in the month of February. I refined. I was discovered by a French astrophysicist named Daniel Rowan, working as a director of research emeritus at the CNRS. It's going on. I used to be the smallest exoplanet until the death. Discovery of the exoplanet that was given the name Kepler's 37b. I do orbit in a binary star system called Caro 7 here. Caro 7a is the G type main sequence star, smaller and cooler than your sun, so we're clear. I'm in exoplanet orbiting the star, Caro 7, you see. In the constellation of Monoceros, my name is Caro 7B. When you travel 489 light years from the Earth to the constellation of Monoceros, you'll find Caro 7B. Since its birth, I have a diameter measured at 1.58 times that of the Earth. That means I have a volume 3.95 times Earth. I was the first extrasolar terrestrial planet to be found. I have a very short orbital period every 20 hours. Same. 
gravitational pull creates the tides that we see change. 238,900 miles from the Earth is the distance measured when the first spaceship landed on my turf. The reason you see one half of my surface all the time is because my rotation's the same speed as the Earth taught in this rhyme. It takes 27 Earth days for me to rotate once around. There is no air on my surface, so you won't hear any sound. On the moon, Earth's natural satellite, I rotate the same speed as the Earth, and I'm a natural source of light. On the moon, my appearance is gray and white. You only see one half of my surface, whether it's day or night. This is 
why I don't reflect brightly in certain infrared frequencies or to the eye like other asteroids do. I'm a quirky satellite and this is true. Because of this, researchers are starting to agree I may be a chip off your known moon flying free. Basically what you're seeing is a flying silicate caused by micrometeorite impacts in the space environment. It's possible when space rocks hit the moon at a high degree. When I was ejected into space, I am lunar debris. I am a near-Earth object also known as Neo, part of a group of near-Earth asteroids called Apollo. I'm an object in a specific type of core orbital configuration with a planet. I'm called a quasi-satellite. I know it's weird, but I didn't plan it. Earth has a second moon. It's me, provisionally designated. 2016 HO3 Kamu Avrava is thought to be an asteroid, but that may have changed with new facts that we can avoid. are the earth and the moon and you will learn really soon you can fit the planets in our solar system between us this is true we are the earth and the moon we meant to tell you for a while the average distance between us we will explain to you with a smile the average distance between the earth and the moon is 382,500 kilometers here's the other seven planets fit between us explaining who they are with some cool features i am mercury the first planet from the sun i'm the second hottest planet on my run my average diameter we do 4,879 kilometers at these up as they are shown I am Venus the hottest planet and the second from the Sun I have an average diameter of 12,104 kilometers in the solar system hi I am Mars the fourth planet from the Sun you should know an average diameter of 6,771 kilometers as I did show. My name is Jupiter, the largest planet, and from the sun, I'm number five. My average diameter is 139,822 kilometers as I thrive. I'm the planet with the prominent rings. The sixth one called Saturn. My average diameter is 116,464 kilometers while I turn. I am Uranus. I am the seventh planet from the solar system's sun. I have an average diameter of 50,724 kilometers. I'm a frozen one. I am Neptune, the eighth and last planet in the solar system, as far as we know. I have an average diameter of 49,244 kilometers. I'm blue as shown. Our total planet diameter size when added up is 380,008 kilometers we share. We still have 2,492 kilometers of space to spare. We are the Earth and the Moon. And you will learn really soon. You can fit the planets in our solar system between us. This is true. We are the Earth and the Moon. We meant to tell you for a while the average distance between us 
we will explain to you with a smile. My name is 55, Can Cree, also known as Jensen. I'm a super Earth, you see. I'm an exoplanet in the orbit of my host star, named Copernicus. Here's what they know about me this far. I was discovered in the month of August on the 30th day in the year of 2004, I convey. I was nicknamed the Diamond Planet due to research that suggests I have a carbon-rich composition underneath my surface. I was discovered by a female astronomer. She goes by the name of Barbara MacArthur. The detection method used by astronomers to find me is a method called radial velocity. My host star Copernicus from 55 can create is from Earth, a 40 light year trip away. My host star is a G type star similar to your sun. You know I'm 0.01544 AU from my star's glow. My name is 55 can create, also known as Jensen. I'm a super Earth, you see. I'm an exoplanet in the orbit of my host star named Copernicus. Here's what they know about me this far. My mass is about 8.08 that of the Earth. I take 0.7 days to complete one orbit of my star for what that's worth. I belong to the constellation called Cancer. Here is an example of what it looks like. Of this I am sure. In 2016 in the month of February, NASA's Hubble telescope detected two gases on me. Those gases were hydrogen and helium with hints of hydrogen cyanide while it was on its run. I am tidally locked just like your moon. That means I have a dark side. You won't see it too soon. Silicates in my atmosphere would condense into clouds on my tidally side I commence reflecting the lava from below so there would be a sparkle in my dark skies that don't show my day side temperatures average about 4200 degrees that is in Fahrenheit if you please there are more planets orbiting my host star we will visit those soon keep it on your radar my name is 55 can create also known Kiss. Here's what they know about me this far. My name is TOI 700. An exoplanet outside the solar system I be My name is TOI 700D 101.4 light years away from Earth Let's learn about me I was discovered in January In the year of 2020 By Emily Gilbert While studying astronomy I'm an exoplanet 101.4 light years away from Earth in the Dorado constellation. That's where I play. I'm the first Earth sized planet orbiting my host star. TOI 700, a red dwarf. We know this so far. I orbit my star in its habitable zone. Maybe there's a presence of liquid water on my surface shown. My star is 40% the mass of your sun and 55% of its temperature. These facts are so fun. I'm one of three exoplanets detected by test to be orbiting the host star TOI 700. We don't rest. Our names are TOI 700 B and C and TOI 700 D. You guessed it, that is me. All three exoplanets may be tidally locked. I do sing, which means the same faces towards the object we are orbiting. I was discovered by test to see planets out of sight called the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite. 
test was designed and launched specifically to find Earth-sized planets orbiting nearby stars like me. Scientists confirmed the find called TOI 700D with NASA Spitzer Space Telescope independently. TOI is short for Transiting Exoplanet Survey. Satellite object of interest, it's so long to say. NASA's on the hunt for more Earth-sized planets, but for now you have me. I'm sure there's more to find yet. You could become an astronomer, a job that's out of this world. You can be anything you want, whether you're a boy or a girl. My name is TOI 700 D, an exoplanet outside the solar system. I be. My name is TOI 700 D, 101.4 light years away from Earth. Let's learn about me. TOI 561B, one of the oldest rocky planets discovered you'll see. TOI 561B, I am an exoplanet in the Milky Way galaxy. TOI 561B, also known as Super Earth, soon you'll also agree. I am TOI 561B. My surface is extremely hot due to my star's proximity. TOI 561B was discovered in the year of 2020 by the Transmitting Exoplanet Survey Satellite. Also known as TESS, it sees things way out of sight. TOI 561B was discovered in the Milky Way galaxy an estimated age of 13 billion years the milky way galaxy is super old i do agree my estimated age is 10 billion years that makes me one of the oldest rocky planets discovered with cheer i am around 280 light years away i'm a third bigger than the earth i do convey I get close when I orbit my G-type star. It takes me 10.5 hours to orbit once because I'm not too far. My mass is 1.59 of the Earth's. That's one of the reasons I'm so unique for what that's worth. Lauren Wise's team is researching me. She's the team leader at the University of Hawaii. It's unlikely any life can survive on me With a surface temperature of 3630 degrees That's roughly twice as hot as molten lava on Earth In Fahrenheit since my discovery and my birth I'm tidally locked to my G-type star in motion I have a permanent day side that's likely home to a magma ocean I am TOI 561B One of the oldest rocky planets discovered you'll see TOI 561B I am an exoplanet in the Milky Way galaxy TOI 561B, also known as Super Earth, soon you'll also agree. I am TOI 561B, my surface is extremely hot due to my star's proximity. Did you know? The place you call home is a habitable place in space called the Goldilocks Zone. It's a place in space, a certain distance from our star, where liquid water could be found. Guess what? It's where you are. Goldilocks Zone is a habitable zone in an area around a star you know. The zone is not too hot and it's not too cold for liquid water to exist so life can grow. There is only one planet we know so far that is teeming with life, of course. 
That planet that we're sure can sustain real life has a well-known name. It is the Earth. If the Earth were to move as far as Pluto, the sun would be the size of a pea. The oceans and atmosphere on Earth would immediately freeze. But if Earth moved to the position of planet Mercury, the Earth's water would quickly boil away. There would be no more life you see. The Goldilocks Zone is a habitable place where Earth sits from the sun. Allowing water to stay liquid, liquid water is the source of life. That's how life on Earth begun. Stars come in different sizes, masses, and temperatures throughout space. Size and temperature of a star determines the Goldilocks Zone's place. Stars that are smaller and much cooler than the sun have a habitable zone much closer to their star on its run. Stars that are hotter, much larger, and more massive than the sun have their habitable zone much farther. This concludes our fun. Did you know? The place you call home is a habitable place in space called the Goldilocks Zone. It's a place in space, a certain distance from our star, where liquid water could be found. Guess what? It's where you are. My name is Kepler 452B, also known as Earth 2.0. Yeah, that's me. I may support life within the Goldilocks zone while orbiting a sun-like star like yours at home. Let's see, where am I? I'm 1,402 light years away from the solar system your Earth does play. I was discovered by the Kepler Space Telescope on July 23rd, 2015 by NASA with hope. Though a study in 2018 by Fergal Mullally, I have not been proven to exist statistically. But if I do exist, I would be potentially the first rocky super Earth planet you will see. If life did exist on me, it would be because of my orbit around my sun-like star. That would be the cause. I orbit in a place called the Goldilocks Zone. That's a habitable zone of sun-like stars I do roam. My name is Kepler. 452B, also known as Earth 2.0, yeah that's me. I may support life within the Goldilocks zone while orbiting a sun-like star like yours at home. I have a probable mass five times that of the Earth. Though that's a rough estimate from astronomers, of course. I probably have many active volcanoes due to my higher mass and density compared to the Earth you call home. I have an orbit of 385 days, which is 20 more days than your Earth's year, I can say. The star that I orbit is called Kepler 452. It's the Earth-like star that I orbit, this is true. Maybe someday you can visit me and make history, but for now I'm known as a rocky super Earth, that's what I be. My name is Kepler 452B, also known as Earth 2.0. Yeah, that's me. I may support life within the Goldilocks zone while orbiting a sun-like star like yours at home. My name is Kepler 452B, also known as Earth 2.0. Yeah, that's me. I may support life within the Goldilocks zone while orbiting a sun-like star like yours at home. Here's a theory of how the Earth was formed, so scientists would say this interstellar journey will show you the role gravity had played. Almost five billion years ago, there was only our sun, which was a newborn star surrounded by dust was how it begun. Over time, this dust began to slam into one another due to gravity pulling it in as it smashed into each other. The planet that we live on was made by Space dust and rocks that formed Earth over millions of years into an orb, not a box. They say four 
and a half billion years ago, Earth was a fireball. That's right, with surface temperatures over 2,000 degrees and Fahrenheit. At this point, there was no air, just carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and water vapor, making it hot and toxic when the Earth began. Our boiling ball of liquid rock was slammed by a young planet. This planet's name was Thea. It was the size of Mars as you see it. The blast wave from this collision sent trillions of tons of debris, which over time was pulled back in to circle the Earth by gravity. This giant ring around the Earth was made of red hot dust and rock, eventually formed our moon. We see today, I know it's a shock. Let's speed up millions of years to see how water formed. About 3.9 billion years ago, Earth was hit by a meteor storm. Inside each meteor, scientists think small crystals. Each crystal held tiny droplets of water inside their shells. Over the 20 million years that these meteors fell, pools of water started to form on the cooling crust. I do tell, the water on our earth is billions of years old now you see, and may have traveled millions of miles to be consumed by you and me. Let's speed up hundreds of millions of years to find the earth covered in water with tiny islands peaking while the core remain much hotter this hot core pushes molten rock up and out the earth's new crust when the lava cools it forms the land we know as it builds and thrusts over time these land masses start to collide and eventually form our continents we know today do still transform here's a theory of how the earth was formed so scientists would say this interstellar journey will show you the role gravity had played how did earth get atmosphere we have today there are three basic atmospheric hypotheses still used to this day the first atmosphere was made up of hydrogen and helium gas these molecules move so fast they escape Earth's gravity into space at last the second was made of lots of volcanoes releasing water as steam and carbon dioxide hydrogen sulfate ammonia and methane science agreed the third and current atmosphere is made up of this you will see plants taken carbon dioxide and give up oxygen to you and me all animals take in oxygen and give up co2 also volcanoes and burning stuff produces this like fossil fuels we burn too many fossil fuels and have too many factory farms all this carbon dioxide we produce is doing our earth harm it's up to us to change the way we consume and create energy if you start to make changes now our planet will change you will see to save the earth to improve your future now we're capable of change go make us all proud here's a theory of how the earth was formed so scientists would say this interstellar journey will show you the role gravity had played you're so smart and important so believe in what you can do make a change and set the stage in earth's future for you Let's talk about the lithosphere and the seven major tectonic plates. It's what shapes the face of the earth with volcanoes and earthquakes. The lithosphere consists of the upper mantle and the crust. They're part of the geosphere on earth which makes these plates adjust. Tectonic plates are irregularly shaped slabs of solid rock composed of oceanic and continental lithosphere bedrock. There are three tectonic boundaries running between tectonic plates. Divergent, convergent, and transform now aren't those names just great? Divergent boundaries move away from each other and produce rip valleys. Most active between oceanic plates, yes, the plates out in the sea. Convergent boundaries move toward one another and destructively collide. That's where you That slide past one another. The San Andreas Fault lends the best example of this to discover. Let's talk about the lithosphere and the seven major tectonic plates. It's what shapes the face of the Earth with volcanoes and earthquakes. Let's look at this topological map of the Earth that we live on. In the seven major tectonic plates, we're learning in this song. The biggest is the Pacific Plate, it lies beneath the Pacific Ocean. Nicknamed the Ring of Fire due to all the volcanic emotion. The North American Plate is 
it's an X on the list of major plates. It includes both continental and oceanic crust, I indicate. Next we have the Eurasian plate, also a major tectonic grate. Two large continents, it includes our Europe and Asia today. Let's talk about the lithosphere and the seven major tectonic plates. It's what shapes the face of the earth with volcanoes and earthquakes. Then the African plate is next. It does straddle the vast equator. Most of Africa's continents in it. That's an easy way to locate her. The Antarctic plate is a medium size of the seven plates that are major. It houses the continent of Antarctica. You'll hear as I banter. The Indo-Australian plate is on the smaller side of the major. It's often considered two plates, but as one, it's definitely much greater. The South American plate is the smallest of the major plates you know. That includes South America and Atlantic Ocean seabed below. Talk about the lithosphere and the seven major tectonic plates. It's what shapes the face of the Earth with volcanoes and earthquakes. Talk about the lithosphere and the seven major tectonic plates. It's what shapes the face of the earth with volcanoes and earthquakes. Earth has four major geological subsystems. I will teach you in this song. I hope you learn and listen. Geosphere, atmosphere, hydrosphere, and biosphere are four Start with geosphere, all Earth's materials and mass. It's comprised of all these parts that you'll be learning in my class. The solid iron in our core is a bit smaller than the moon. The nickel iron alloy on our core is liquid, it is true. The mantle is a layer between the crust and on our core, mostly made of minerals and silicate rock. Let's learn some more. Which brings us to the crust and Let's move on to the hydrosphere, it's a major one as well. It includes all forms of Earth's water now, isn't that swell? Oceans, lakes, and rivers, and our water vapor too, are what make up the hydrosphere, you learn something new. The biosphere's the final of the four major groups, including anything that's living that also includes you. Microbes, animals, plants, birds, and insects alone. I 
Way, eight part spiral galaxy. You now see with an estimated visible diameter of a hundred to two hundred thousand light years across me. I'm the Milky Way. This song is about facts of my galaxy. I'm not the biggest, but I'm the one you call home. Actually, I am the Milky Way, the galaxy you are all a part of. Your solar system's a small part of me. Here's more of me you love. Your galaxy is a gravitationally bound collection of stars and a spiral swirling through space that's what you know about me this far i am one in about two trillion galaxies in this observable universe let's give some examples of my size in the coming verse i do have from my center to the edge of me which in light years measures 52,850 when you measure me from one edge across my entirety I'm about a hundred thousand light years across as you can plainly see I do probably contain 100 to 400 billion stars you know that's an estimate that humans created but there could be more to show to give you an example of my size well we'll look to my neighbor and see the spectacle goes by the name of the andromeda galaxy if you measure the Andromeda across from one side to the other, it's about 220,000 light years wide. It's my big brother. This is IC1101 galaxy. I will now share. It spans as much as four million light years. That's a lot bigger if we good example I am part of it's hard to muster the Lanny Ikea super cluster is thought to be in size 520 million light years an estimate humans had comprised the next time you think earth is the center of the universe you Remember, you're just a speck floating in trillions of galaxies in a space unknown. I'm Comet Hailbop, one of the brightest comets seen. C slash 1995-01, I was designated formally. I'm Comet Hailbop, one of the brightest comets seen in 1995 was my discovery. I was discovered by an astronomer, Alan Hale and Thomas Bob, the astronomer amateur. I was discovered before I was visible to the naked eye on July 23rd in 1995. Astronomers believe I originated from beyond Neptune, from the Oort cloud, which is 2,000 to 100,000 AU. My elliptical orbit is long, they can take around 200 years or even thousands to orbit the sun, just to be clear. I was one of the most widely observed comets in the 20th century in four many decades, one of the brightest seen. I passed perihelion in 1997, but it is unsure when I'll reach my aphelion. When I was visible to the naked eye for humans, 
moments, it was so much fun. I was observed with the naked eye for about 18 months. I may have had a near collision with Jupiter in early June 2215 BC. I'm Comet Hellbop, one of the brightest comets seen. C slash 199501, I was designated formally. I'm Comet Hellbop, one of the brightest comets seen. In 1995 was my discovery. I have several types of tails that trail. Let me tell you about all of them to impress they don't fail. One is called the bright dust tail created by the reflection of the sunlight from dust streaming from the comet am I. The second is called the ion tail. It is more faint made up of electrically charged atoms. I do hell. I was discovered with a rare third tail you'll see called the sodium tail trailing from the back of me. I do have a nucleus which is estimated to be about 30 to 40 kilometers across me. I am the first comet that astronomers did detect the noble gas argon in which I reflect. I'm Comet Hellbop, one of the brightest comets seen. C slash 199501, I was designated formally. I'm Comet Hellbop, one of the brightest comets seen. In 1995 was my discovery. This is the Oort Cloud, a spherical layer of icy objects surrounding our sun. This is the Oort Cloud, which is a theoretical concept astronomers have spun. The Oort Cloud is the most distant region in the solar system. It's much farther than the Kuiper Belt. We're filling you with this wisdom. The Oort Cloud's supposedly a giant spherical shell surrounding the rest of the solar system as you're propelled. There could be billions or even trillions of objects within the Oort Cloud. That's what NASA projects. This Oort Cloud could be the source of most comets. This is thought because of a comet's long period orbit. The distance of this Oort Cloud from your sun is estimated to be 2,000 to 100,000 AU on its run. One astronomical unit or AU is the distance between Earth and the sun like you see on your screen. This is the Oort Cloud, a spherical layer of icy objects surrounding our sun. This is the Oort Cloud, which is a theoretical concept astronomers had spun. The first description of the Oort Cloud was in 1950 by Jan Hendrik, or the Dutch astronomer you see. This Oort Cloud's divided into two regions you see here, a dish-shaped inner Oort Cloud and an outer Oort Cloud sphere. There's never been a confirmed direct observation of the Oort Cloud, so it continues to be speculation. This region's thought to have formed 4.6 billion years ago after the formation of the planets in the solar system, though. This is the Oort Cloud, a spherical layer of icy objects surrounding our sun. This is the Oort Cloud, which is a theoretical concept astronomers had spun. My name is TRES-2B. I'm a gas giant too far away to see. I'm the darkest exoplanet ever identified. I'm a bit bigger than Jupiter, I'll describe. With the discovery date of August 21st in 2006 is when they noticed me at first. I was confirmed a planet on September 8th in 2006 officially. My birthday, 
I was discovered by an astronomer named Francis T. O'Donovan. That is for sure. First seen on the Transatlantic Exoplanet Survey, or you could call it TRES. It's an acronym, I say. This all happened in California. You will see at the famous Palomar Observatory. My discovery also took place at the Lowell Observatory located in Arizona. Now, here's more about me. My name is T-R-E-S-2-B. I'm a gas giant too far away to see. I'm the darkest exoplanet ever identified. I'm a bit bigger than Jupiter, I'll describe. GSC 03549-02811 is the star that I orbit and a long named one. My parent star is a yellow main sequence star similar to your sun. Just to keep you on par, I belong to a constellation in the far northern sky. Its name is Draco, which is Latin for dragon, I imply. I'm 750 light years away from your solar system. That's where I'll stay. I'm thought to be the darkest known exoplanet, reflecting less than 1% of any life that does hit. My mass and radius does indicate I'm a gas giant with a ball composition similar to Jupiter. You're super giant. I'm likely to be tidally locked to my parent star. I'm extremely dark and completely bizarre. My name is TRES-2B. I'm a gas giant too far away to see. I'm the darkest exoplanet ever identified. I'm a bit bigger than Jupiter, I'll describe. Astronauts explored the lunar highlands, this is true. In 